Hi, I'm Stephen Yakov. This presentation is entitled Illustration of Sampling Delay in PWM Converters. There are two videos relevant to this presentation. Here are the links, and I'm going also to print the links in the description section of the video that you are now watching. I highly recommend to watch these videos because they give the background of the issues that I'm discussing in this presentation. So we are talking about stability and the effect of sampling delay on stability. Now the best way to understand stability is through the, I think, through the Nyquist plot. I'm showing here the imaginary axis, the real axis of a the loop gain of a system. This is the vector, this is the amplitude, this is the phase. And what Nyquist criteria says is that if the plot of our system, this is this here, starting from frequency of zero to infinity and then from minus infinity to zero again, negative frequencies. If this plot is not encircling the minus one point, this is the unit circle and this is the minus one point. If it's not encircling it, then the system is stable and the penetration here actually tells us if it is encircling or not, because if the penetration here is below 180 degree, we go this way, otherwise we go around the minus one point, and the distance here, the phase between the penetration and the 180 degree is the phase margin. And we like to have the phase margin something like 45 degrees at least for good dynamic response, not too much oscillatory and not peaking. So these are the basics of dynamic stability. Now in digital control of PWM system, we usually are using a carrier which is symmetrical because we like to sample voltage and current at the mid of the turn on of the transistor because this is the quiet place. We don't want it to be near the edges here, which are, of course, full of oscillations, spikes, etc. And therefore, we have a sampling here. And then, if it is a digital system, we have to do a calculation of the PID controller. It takes time. So, it won't be before the next cycle that actually the result of this measurement is actually being implemented. So, we have a delay here. And this delay, depending on the system processor that you use, and of course the duty cycle, etc. it could be somewhere in between one to two times of the period of the switching. That is switching frequency, the period of the switching frequency. So there is a delay, and this delay can be expressed in the Laplace domain by this function, e to the power s, s is a plus variable, and t delay is the delay in second. So this is a classical expression that you can use in transfer function. Now, if you have a sampling delay, this means that you have a phase lag because the implementation is sort of delayed and therefore your system has a built-in now phase lag depending on the sampling delay. And this phase lag is actually pushing this transfer function, the loop gate, toward left side because this is a delay, a negative phase. And there is a danger that it might encircle the minus one point. So a sampling delay means a phase lag, and phase lag is, of course, danger because it can cause instability. Now, in this presentation, I'm going to explore this issue of delay and the effect on PWM converter using LTSPICE. Now, LTSPICE is, of course, a not a digital simulator. It's an analog simulator. Now, the reason that I'm using it is because I like to look at border plots using AC analysis. And if I use LT Spice, I can do it very conveniently, as you will see, without really doing too much work and investing too much in uh, the preparation of the simulation, etc. So when using LT Spice, you can implement delay two ways. One is by a transmission line. Here it is. And the other one is by a Laplace expression. The nice thing about LT Spice, in fact, in all PICE based simulator is that they can handle Laplace expression both if, if they are full-fledged PICE simulator they can handle it both in the time and frequency domain that is for 
transient and AC analysis, which is, of course, very, very. So I'm going to use these two, and I'm going to compare these two. And you see the in here is also coming here. So they are running in parallel. So the first thing to do is just to have a look at this system by itself. And here I'm exposing it to a step function. And I see here the delay. Now the two outputs are one top of the other, that is this one and this one of the two models. They look the same. And the delay is, of course, this uh, 10 uh, micros. Now, if I zoom into the responses, there is a difference, okay? The difference is 91 nanosecond between the delay line model and this uh, Laplace expression model. I don't know why. It really doesn't matter for the discussion here, but it's kind of interesting that they are not exactly the same. So as I've said, the beautiful thing is that you can now run AC analysis and get the AC response of the delay. So what I'm getting here is the amplitude, which is of course constant because the, a delay does not change the amplitude, but there is a change in the phase. Now, the delay is constant. The frequency is changing. So as the frequency goes up, if you calculate what is the implication of this delay of 10 microseconds as far as the phase of the signal, then of course, the higher the signal, the larger is the phase. So therefore, as you go up with the frequency, the phase lag is going down and down, that is becoming more and more negative, it's lagging. And as you can see, it goes very, very quickly to very large number. And this is because if you are at very high frequency, like 100 kilohertz, and your delay is 10 microseconds, it's like a full cycle, like 360. So this explains what is really happening here. So now I'm going to do some sanity check. And that is, I'm going to compare the time domain and the frequency domain to see if they are really match each other. So I'm running here a case of a 10 kilohertz, and this is the input, this is the output, the two outputs are just about the same, and of course the delay here is 10 microsecond. Now, 10 microsecond for a 10 kilohertz, which has the period of 100 microseconds, 10 microsecond is like 110, it's 36 degrees, so I'm expecting a phase lag of 36 degrees, and indeed, when I'm running the AC analysis, looking at 10 kilohertz, and here the phase, lo and behold, it's minus 36 degree. So we are okay. That is, the AC analysis is really doing the job and giving us the right phase length. So now I'm implementing the delay into a PWM converter. Actually, it's a model of PWM converter, or more precisely, it's an average model. I don't want a switching model because I won't be able to run AC analysis. Again, I like to see the bottom plots. So therefore, I have here a average model of a buck converter. So we see here the inductor, capacitor. This is the load. This is a current source for a step. So we have a step load here of uh, one amp, a short step. And then I have here the amplifier or the error amplifier, that's the compensator. Now, I didn't go into a very fancy phase compensation. This is a type one, just a leg type compensator. Bandwidth will be limited, but it's okay just for the demonstration. So I have here an amplifier, which is fed from five volts. So therefore the voltage here is clamped to five volts. And then I have a divider one to five. So therefore, the maximum value here of the error amplifier output is one volt, which is the duty cycle. And then I'm passing it through the delay, uh, loading the line with 50 ohms, uh, 50 ohm impedance to the line. And then I have here a modulator, and that is I'm generating the average voltage which is the input voltage, in this case it's 15 volt, times the duty side. So this is the average voltage getting into this NC section, and then therefore I'll get an output which is proportional to the input and of course to the duty side. So this is an average, sort of a hybrid average model with 
a delay implementing into it to see the effect of it on the system. So the first thing to do is to run it without the delay, just to see the loop gain of the system. And I'm getting the loop gain by this AC source. And here we have the signal actually getting into here all the way, and then it's coming back. So the ratio between the voltage here and the voltage here is in fact the loop gain of the system. So here it is. This is the loop gain of the system without the delay. I set the delay to one nanosecond. Well, it won't take zero, so I just put it uh, one nanosecond. And what we see here is the first order behavior, and therefore the phase is indeed uh, about 90 degrees. This is the zero dB, this is the crossover. And you see the bandwidth here is really kind of limited, one kilohertz, which is okay for the purpose that we need here. Now, in this case, of course, the phase margin is 87 degree because we have a phase of about 90 degree, 93. So the phase margin 87, everything is fine, no problem at all. Now here, I am increasing the delay to 50 microseconds. And as you can see, it's already changing the phase lag and it's getting now to 68 degree phase margin, which is still pretty good and the system is still stable. Now, going up to 100 microsecond delay, I'm again in reducing the phase margin. It is still okay, 127 degrees phase lag, total phase lag, so we are farther from the 180, 53 degree distance. So it's a stable system, and then I've increased it to 300 microseconds, and of course, then it's uh, getting to be too large a uh, delay, and it's minus 209, meaning that the phase margin, you might say it's minus 29, so it's above 180 degree. This is an unstable system, no question about that. Now, as the bridge said, the proof of the pudding is in the heating. So let's run now some time domain simulation to see if indeed we see this behavior in the time domain. So I'm first running a time domain simulation with a delay of 100 microseconds, which implies the phase margin of 53 degree, which is okay. So I'm looking just at the output. This is the step load. There is of course a change here. This is due to the ESR of the capacitor, it's by the way, 50 milliohm, but it looks pretty good, probably could be improved, but that's not the point of this presentation. Now, I'm looking at the case of 300 microseconds, which causes a phase margin which is negative, that is above 180 degree. Well, the system is certainly unstable, it's just oscillating, it's, it's an oscillator. So what are the conclusions of this uh, short presentation? First of all, we clearly see that sampling delay introduce phase delay in the loop. And then that sampling delay can thus lead to instability because of the phase delay. And then that a sampling delay becomes dangerous as the ratio of the delay to the period of the loop gain crossover frequency is increasing. Meaning that if you have a delay, okay, let's say five microseconds, and you'd like to know whether it's important, whether it will do any change or it'll affect your circuit, you have to look at the crossover frequency of the loop gate that you have or you expect, look at the frequency there and compare the delay with the period of this frequency. So this will give you actually the phase lag, which then will tell you whether you have to do something about it or you can just forget about it because uh, it really doesn't add much to the total phase delay. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.